now expecting a child. So this tells us uh, many things. Uh, first of all, it tells us that Mary is very, very, very young. So in churches and Catholic or Protestant churches, uh, more in Catholic churches, um, pictures of Mary is uh, a 30 year old woman holding a little baby. And this is uh, not uh, this is um, it, I won't say it's not true, but it's not uh, the, the fact what we are told here. He they are engaged. Um, she was expecting a child, of course, her first child, and therefore she had to be in the uh, she had to be in the age of fourteen or fifteen. Yeah, so little teenage pregnancy we have here, and this those are just the facts. What happened then? So let us um, go further on. There we have a side note here: the distance from Nazareth to Bethlehem is 70 or 80 miles. A fit man could do this in about four days. Some Christians say that Joseph was an older man, could be, and with Mary being pregnant, this could have taken them upwards of a week. So, just so that you know. Hard facts, hard facts. So, please follow me to this place. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him into in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. Okay, this is the story we all know. We all now have something in our in our mind as um, uh, as part of Western culture. There is no possibility that we won't have a manger uh, like uh, in uh, our, our church uh, buildings, um, like in the church building we will see very soon uh, in our minds. So that is that is the case. But we have uh, every reason to believe that it was not like this. We uh, we uh, make the the fairy tale of uh, like uh, there was a cow and there was uh, there was a little donkey or something like this. Um, yes, he was laid into a manger, but um, this could also mean that he was in the the upper room of a t uh, of a of a uh, uh, house of the relatives of Joseph. So this could also be, and yeah, but that's also not that important. Important is th that she gave birth to her firstborn son, and yeah, gave him clothes, and yeah, they had problems to find a home. And yeah, that is was a big problem in this time because I think Bethlehem was not prepared for such a um, big amount of people. And you maybe are wondering when did the, when did this happen? Happened? Did this happen out the? Uh, okay, we now know it's not in the year uh, one or, or minus one. It is written. Uh, it is. It has not ha not happened in this kind of year. Maybe in the year four or five before he was who was born, because um, crazy miracles are beginning to happen. And I believe I believe what Luke is writing here is a story of facts. So, so I believe that he held for true that this what we now read uh, is true. And has happened as a historical fact. There are many stories in the Old Testament where it is where uh, there is no Greek Hellenistic type of thinking, uh, the historical type of thinking. When did this, this happen? Ah, date of um, uh, when Augustus was uh, emperor, when when Herod the Great was there and there and there and there. Um, you won't find this thinking that much in the Old Testament. Therefore, we have to read some stories there in another way. But this story we have to read like Luke. Um, uh, wants to tell it to us. You can decide if you think that's true or that's a fairy tale, but we can believe that Luke held this for true. That night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. Wow, what happened? The Lord appeared with his angels to those shepherds. And those shepherds, this was not just a, a real, um, there, it was not a, a, a normal job. It was a job for people uh, who are outside of society. They were not inside the city. They were outside. They were outsiders. Um, and if you have a, it would be hard for you as a normal Jew to have a shepherd friend. Um, and to this outsiders, outside of town, just maybe a little bit chattering around the, uh, around the fire, suddenly, okay, be with me, suddenly something happened, suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them, don't be afraid, <laughs> he said, I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. Great joy to all people, great joy to my year of darkness, great joy to 
my struggling by the way thanks for everybody who uh, prayed for me um, after the, the last service I asked you to pray for me if I um, should buy the B haptics uh, uh, vibrations vest for $300 or $500 and I decided thank you so very much just kidding <laughs> uh, I, I decided I decided um, <laughs> but yeah so for many of you you do have have to to face more difficult decisions and maybe have problems and had a very hard year maybe many of us so <laughs> um and so we at least after this year know what darkness is and i bring there is some good news that will bring great joy to all people if that is true if this jesus story is true what he has done for us on the cross then it's not just a cool way to get into heaven okay oh i'm saved okay I, when I when I when I'm dead, then I get into heaven. Okay, then this is safe, so I can live my life and the, uh, uh, everything's great. No, no, no. It is way more than that. There is a big, mighty, holy spirit coming into your life, changing everything. If you want to, if you choose this Jesus that is now born in a manger, the Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem. Finally, after all those years, all those years of separation between humanity and God this Lord has been born finally today in Bethlehem the city of David and you will recognize him by his by this sign you will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth lying in a manger suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others the armies of heaven praising God and saying glory to God in highest heaven and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased then the angels have returned to heaven. The shepherds said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. That is so interesting that, that um, the Lord is not coming to Augustus, to Caesar, to Emperor Augustus, but to those little shepherds, those little, those little unemployed uh, um, uh, under the bridge. Some unemployed people under the bridge, under the fire ton, and... The, the army of angels is coming to them and saying, hey, you should hear this first because m me, God, I have my eye on, the, on those that are outsiders, on those that are outside, on those that are hidden by society, those that are beaten. Um, and this is God's character throughout the Old and throughout the New Testament. Everywhere, God is there for the poor. God is there for the crying. God is there for those who seek, who seek peace, and even for those that cannot uh, have a just have 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 a, have a, uh, a word or, or a thinking of or thinking of love inside of them because of all the things they face. God is, um, God is seeing them, and therefore God had is His eye their whole lives on those shepherds and he's saying oh those shepherds oh i like them <laughs> there's one shepherd oh this is such such, such a cool guy he's so funny <laughs> and i like how, how he's how he's uh sometimes making sometimes making a little bit fun with it with the with the uh, sheeps and um <laughs> with the sheep and this so, so such such a cool guy i want to appear to him that is so funny and he will he will really be uh, <laughs> amazed when he sees what i have done to him so so much did god love those shepherds that he came to them to tell them the good news beautiful so and what happened then so please follow me we go here 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 <laughs> a little bit outside outside of town hopefully you find me i'm here yeah outside of town and this is <laughs> this is so beautiful um the manger <laughs> when all those beautiful uh pets and animals so they hurried the shepherds hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph and there was the baby lying in the manger after seeing him the shepherds told everyone that what had happened and what the angel had said to them about his child this child the shepherds were totally amazed they're like I have to tell everybody so maybe you're one of those persons that if you do if he does something that he enjoys he has to tell everybody because hey, I want everybody to know. Everybody has to know um, about this good news. Or even did not go first to his family when he got to Na back to Nazareth again. And even when he was asked, hey, what is it with your family? He says, hey, everybody who does my will is my family. <laughs> okay, this is a hard story. If, you, if you're very much into this, I, I praise Mary thing, mm, this is a hard story for you to take. Um, but it's in the, in the Bible. <laughs> so, um, but 
and and imagine Mary Mary experienced all this. The, an angel talked to her. The shepherds came to her. Um, many many things happened to her. And even there, and even after all this happened, there was it possible for her that she doubted. That she doubted. Okay, why was my son doing crazy stuff right now? So maybe, um, yeah, maybe God is forgiving us uh, also our little moment of doubt where we, th where we are thinking uh, okay this whole thing I do not know please God help me a little bit I know you're uh, you're existing but sometimes uh, this whole your invisible thing is a little bit curious for me so please um, please um, touch me maybe in this service so I really really recognize uh, that you're here that you are touchable like my new Be Haptics West that I will receive after Christmas. Just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> you should all see your faces. Okay, <laughs> I'm not I'm not getting any money from this. Um, the shepherds went back to the flocks, plor uh, uh, their flocks glorifying and praising God <laughs> uh, for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angels had told them. Yes, God is telling you something, and it is right. Have you, have you, uh, give me a heart emoji if you have, have experienced this. God spoke prophetically into your life, and when you receive this, you're like, what? This, this thing is real? I'm, I'm, <laughs> I, I am a Christian and I believe in God, but uh, that this is real is a new level of uh, being God. I, I believe God is real. Okay, oh, so many, so many experiences this is very cool and all of you who did not experience this be patient let us pray together and um, that you will receive so let me just pray here i think that's maybe uh, what the spirit wants from me so jesus um thank you thank you thank you that you're still talking to us and thank you that you have that you have specific words for everybody's life and sometimes it's hard to hear and sometimes i can i'm i'm, I'm, I'm bad at hearing stuff no i'm not bad at hearing stuff from my nature but sometimes i mishear you and um yeah, but please help us to to train to hear your voice more and please let us come through let us be patient until the thing you promised us comes into our life and let's then therefore praise you praise you eh, that you are trustful and that you make your promises true i believe still jesus amen Still, I believe. <laughs> Sorry, my grammar. Um, so, just come with me. We are going through the next verses. So, here I am. Hopefully, you are with me. Inside the town of Bethlehem. Eight days later. Oh, yeah. That's so, that's so very important. Eight days later, when the baby was circumcised, he was named Jesus. The name given him by the angel even before he was conceived i want to focus on he was circumcised because um the i think the the evangelical church and the the catholic church I, i'm not very sure with this but i heard from a theologian professor at least in germany um the christmas story is ending before those this verse 21 because okay the 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 baby is born, um, the shepherds were there, and now they're gone, so the, the Christmas story is over. But it, it's not over here. If you, um, if you are a Jew and you tell a birth story, the birth story does, does not end with the child being outside the womb of the woman. The birth story ends with a circumcision. <laughs> and therefore, we should not keep out the circumcision because that makes very clear that this Jesus was a Jew boy, a little Jew boy, a brick. A Hebrew, a Hebrew boy, uh, a little Middle Eastern Hebrew boy. Maybe in some of our countries, in some of our shops, he wouldn't even be allowed to get into because he's such a Middle East guy. So <laughs> his face, his eyes, his his hair, uh, everything, everything so Middle Eastern, everything so Jewish. And, <laughs> and we should remember this, yeah? Jesus the Jew of course, was circumcised. He was named Jesus, the name given him by the angel, even before he was conceived. The, Jesus means God saves. Then it was the time, the time for the purification offering as required by the law of Moses after the birth of a child. So his parents took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. The law of the Lord says, if a woman's first child is a boy, he must be dedicated to the Lord. So, the, so they offered the sacrifice re required in the law of the Lord, either a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. So his parents obviously were Jews, so they followed the Jewish tradition. At that time, 
there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, uh, named Simeon. He was righteous and devout and was eagerly waiting for the Messiah to come and rescue Israel. The Holy Spirit was upon him, not in him, but upon him, and had revealed to him that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Messiah. That day the Spirit led him to the temple. So when Mary and Joseph came to present the baby Jesus to the Lord as the law required, Simeon was there. That day, I want to focus first on that day the Spirit led him to the temple. So he was Spirit-guided and the Spirit guided him to the temple on that very day he really needed to go to the temple. He, he maybe had a feeling, I, I feel mm, I should go to the temple today. And the Holy Spirit guided him to, uh, the, so that he will see the fulfillment of his prophecy. And how did he hear this prophecy? Because he was able to hear, because he made himself open that God could speak directly into his life. And not only those prophecies like I mean, God will send his firstborn, uh, his, 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 his son uh, down on earth, but very specific for you, very specific. That God says, hey, I want you to be in this or that country. I want you to be this or that, um, in this or that uh, thing. I um, believed that God chose me to be in a, in, in a metal band. And... And that was one of the first things uh, I, I prophetically heard from God. And yeah, since more than 10 years, I am. <laughs> and soon I am on the cover of a Brazilian metal magazine. <laughs> I'm very proud of this, by the way. Um, <laughs> but that doesn't, that doesn't matter that much. Um, sorry for all the private stories. But you, you understand. So um, I told my friends so much um, that... <laughs> That I uh, that I believe that I will be in that metal band. Some really were annoyed. They're like, "Ah, he never will be in a Christian metal band." I, he always talks about this. So I, but I couldn't stop talking about that God. What God wants to do for me. And there are other prophecies I believe over my life um, that are hopefully coming true. And yeah, and I hope that I am open enough and uh, and and willing to hear the Spirit of God enough that I will be led. To that temple, like Zimeon, to the to the place where God says, "Now it is time. Now it is time for that house you're waiting for. Now it is time for the job you're waiting for. Now it's the time that for the be haptics west you're waiting for." Just kidding. Um, <laughs> they don't receive any money for this. Okay. So when Mary and Joseph came to present the baby Jesus to the Lord, as the Lord required, uh, Zimeon was there. He took the child in his arms and praised God and saying, Sovereign Lord, now let your servant die in peace as you have promised. I will not say this when I receive my best. Um, but, but he was a very old man. Um, and you cannot understand, you cannot imagine, I cannot imagine the joy he must have felt. That was the prophecy over his life. And then he saw the child. He was like, ah. Finally, <laughs> all those years, all those years, waited so, so long, <laughs> and, and now it's over. Now I let your servant die. I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all people. Salvation prepared for all people. Salvation prepared. All people are so abstract. Salvation prepared for Coldus. Salvation prepared for Nika, for Nat, for Joris, for Brian, for... Lupus warrior for Soto, for Deville, for Sich, and so many others. Salvation, and not only salvation that we get into heaven. That's very, very, very cool. But also salvation that there is now a glimpse of heaven inside of us, the kingdom of God, we establish and build right now. It's not waiting until we die. It's right now. Something changed in me. I am transformed now. I am an ambassador of the kingdom of God because the Holy Spirit already transformed me. This is possible to the, through the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ and possible for every one of you. We have to use this power. It's a gospel of action. It's of us, a gospel that brings us into action. We have to ask God, hey, what is your prophecy over, about my life? We have to be led by the Spirit. And this is all possible now for those who are believing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And the whole world is saved right now for everybody who wants this.
Yeah, yeah. Um, that is beautiful. And I think that's my Christmas sermon for today. Um, I don't know if there are many questions right now. Uh, but I think, um, yeah, let us make a, it all.